Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome to the session. In the last session we have discussed about life cycle and assessment, how this is as an impact tool being used to understand the environmental impact of a product. So this session we will take some examples to understand this LCA more. So to start with let us take uh, the first case study that is the case study of a case study of Levi's, it is a pair of jeans. So, little bit about the uh, product or little bit about the company, it was founded in 1853 in USA. They are the inventor of jeans in 1873 and they manufacture their product in 6 continent, 50 country and with 797 contractor. In 2006, Levi's decided to become an eco brand and the trigger over here is that they found that there are lot of uh, restricted substance what's, what is typically impacting the environment, they are using those substances, few of them, few of the substances they are using in their product. So in 2006, they decided to become an eco brand and in the D day LCA to start with to measure that how much is the impact they are creating, they did a LCA and uh, in 2007 and also in 2013 uh, extending the scope further. Now the mostly the goal or the scope for their LCA is to understand what is the impact of water and energy in the cotton cultivation and consumer care because they somehow uh, got into the point that before taking any changes in the product they should un understand what is the impact associated with that. So they try to understand through the LCA what is the impact of water and energy in the cotton cultivation and consumer care. Then they use the variant whatever the LCA variant they use that is cradle to grape and they also try to say that the, they took the measure to reduce the restricted substances in the product. So taking the product this is a gene and the life cycle of the product it starts from cotton production the source of the raw material. From cotton production we get into the fabric production, from fabric production it is garment manufacturing, from garment manufacturing it is transportation and distribution, then consumer care and end of life. So the product life cycle start from cotton production beginning from the sourcing of the raw material and the cotton production and it gets into the recycling. So part of it gets into the recycling, part of it gets into the end of life that is for the disposal. Now if you look at the uh, production footprint of Levi's then uh, 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 in this slide if you look at the location where each of these activities are taking place that see that how globally they have spreaded their production and if they have spreaded their production globally ob um, obviously the impact is also going to be the over, over all the uh, area where they have their production, production facility or the production location. So if you look at uh, the sources of cotton what they use for their product that is typically sources from United States, Mexico and uh, also Brazil, China, Greece and Pakistan these are the sources for cotton. Then the spinning, weaving and dyeing happen in Mexico, China and Pakistan. Then cut, sew, finishing happen in Mexico, Egypt. So if you can see the whole uh, list, uh, list of places where this, uh, this um, cutting, sewing and finishings are done. Then there is a distribution center that is US distribution, Europe distribution and Asia distribution and also the sales channel with respect to each uh, zone or with respect to each area. Again it is United States retail, Europe retail and Asia retail. The consumer is all over the globe 
and finally, the end of life is gets into either it gets into the landfill or it gets into the incineration. Now, this is just a example of their production footprint. There are many more places possibly not added over here where they are having the sourcing or spinning or garment manufacturing or the, um, or the sales channel or the uh, consumer. So, but the idea what we get from this is that the sourcing is happening in one place, manufacturing is happening in another place, distribution is happening all over the globes and the consumer also all over the globes. So, accordingly the footprint also across the globe based on the production footprint what the product is having. And this is specifically for the products Levi's 501. Now, uh, going further what they have done before doing LCA, they have identified what is the functional unit, what aspect they are going to cover. So, uh, from 2007 when they conducted LCA in 2013, they extended the scope. So, here the functional unit what they have taken to understand the impact is Levi's 501 jeans and other core LS and co-product and they consider the multiple consumer market in uh, consider the multiple consumer market because they are looking also what is the impact from the consumer use. So, they have considered United States, UK, France and China. Then they have also look at the primary cotton producing country from where they are sourcing. The primary data sources is from Levi's and also 11 supplier factory and 6 fabric mills and the product attributes what they have studied is 5 fabric, 8 finishes that is low to high complexity and 2012 was the production year. The aspect what they have analyzed is cotton production, fabric production, garment manufacturing, packaging, sundry, uh, transport distribution, consumer care and end of life. So, mostly here we are trying to see what is the goal, what is the scope of their LCA and what are the different aspect they have considered because from there we can decide, we can see what is the LCA inventory, LCA inventory will cover which aspect of the product. Now, considering the um, LCA inventory, so if you look at in the previous slide, we have given the aspect what they have considered. From that aspect, these are what can come under the LCA inventory that is water consumption, that is both in cotton cultivation, fabric and garment manufacturing, whatever the consumption of the water. Then energy use in the different processes in the manufacturing, uh, garment manufacturing and also in the fabric, uh, 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 manufacturing of the fabric. Then nitrogen and phosphorus deposit in the fresh water because this gives the account for the eutrophication. Then total amount of land used for the cotton cultivation that gives the footprint on the land and total amount of metals and mineral use that is to understand the raw material for the product. Now, this is how they have after deciding the inventory, this is how the impact is being what would be the impact category. So, the impact category what they have considered is climate change and how they have tried to uh, capture the impact on the climate change to look at the global warming potential of the GHG released to the environment, then water intake, fresh water taken from the environment water consumption, net fresh water taken from the environment minus the water returned to the same water set at some quality, at the, at the same quality or the better quality. Then eutrophication, the oxygen depletion as a result of nitrogen and phosphorus deposit in the fresh water or the marine environment. Because this is a garment manufacturing, the amount of chemical they use for the dyeing process in the fabric. Uh, that gets released to the nearest water body and whatever the oxygen depletion happens because of this nitrogen and phosphorus that creates the impact for the marine environment. And interestingly there is one more fact is that typically we all uh, possibly like the faded genes more than the 
dark color genes and in fact the faded genes use more of dye and also the water use and the water uh, discharge coming out of that is more chemical and it gets deposited into the water body. Land occupation, total land occupied to support the product system as is and I abiotic depletion that is the major of depletion of non-renewable resources that include fossil energy, metals and mineral. Now let us see how it is coming in the form of the impact. So the first is cradle to grave water consumption percentage by phase. So here if you look at the maximum water consumption is in fiber that is 68 percent and 23 percent in the consumer care. So how the water consumption or water, how do you categorize the water consumption in the consumer care? It is mostly about how much water we need to wash our genes. And um, if you look at the uh, facts given by the company, they have given a zone wise, they have given a country wise consumer and how typically based on their washing pattern and based on the region where they use this particular product based on that how the water consumption changes. So if you get into the impact of the water consumption, then most of the consumption happens in the fiber and the rest of the consumption get into the consumer care that is 23 percent and fabric production is the 6 percent. Similarly coming to the climate change impact, then in the again the maximum impact here over here is consumer care that is 37 percent, then fiber is 9 percent, fabric production is 27 percent and this again if you look at the climate change impact mostly it is from the consumer care and the fabric production. Then coming to the land occupation percentage by phase, then again for the fiber it is maximum obvious than consumer care and again fabric production is just 2 percent over here. And coming to the last type of inter, uh, impact that is for the eutrophication percentage by phase, then mostly it is from the fiber it is 37 percent and consumer care 16 percent, fabric production 11 percent. So mostly and here in fact uh, one of the uh, component what we did not see in the previous 3 cases is that the sun dryers and packaging also creates the impact to the eutrophication that is 16 percent. So mostly if you look at all the four impact, the contribution coming from fiber and consumer care is almost leading in all these cases. Now to summarize this uh, impact of Levi's uh, that is this 501 uh, gene, the for the one pair interestingly if you look at that they have given a nice comparison that whatever the impact that is created by this one pair of Levi's 501 genes, this equates that how what we could have done with the with the if we are not using it for the one pair of the Levi's genes. So if you look at that climate change that is 33.4 kg CO2 equivalent, it is equivalent to 69 miles driven by average US car or this is equal to the 246 hours of TV and plasma big screen. The water what they are consuming for one pair of jeans that is 3 days worth of one US household total water needs. The eutrophication is whatever the amount is going getting into the eutrophication that is the total amount of phosphorus found in 1700 tomatoes and the land occupation is whatever there for the cotton uh, needed for this jeans that is equivalent to 7 people standing with arms outstretched, finger strip touching would form one side square of the side. So this uh, in fact if you look at this slide summarizes the impact of one pair of genes and what is the alternate use for this. And this is since the scope we are only talking about the what is the impact of it, we are not going further to understand wh how Levi's they have address all this. Uh, all this impact, we will just stop here to understand what is the impact of the one pair of the genes, the life cycle impact of the one pair of genes. Now get into the second case study, this is, uh, this is from a 
student project uh, of last year, they have done this assignment to understand what is the NCI impact of electric versus diesel from the gasoline cars. So, they had done a comparative life cycle analysis and this in this life cycle analysis they have taken all types of cars to understand where the impact is more. So, the types of vehicle is ranging from micro to SUV and to understand whether the size makes a difference when it comes to the impact. Typically the data of urban area is considered over here because EVs are mostly used in the urban area and this is what the uh, cars those have been uh, picked that is micro, mini, medium and big and the functional unit is kilometer travel by the vehicle, the load factors and the average vehicle load factor as per the environmental protection agency and the impact category it is being considered. So, the goal or the scope is goal is to understand how the how is the impact is changing for the different kind of vehicle from the fuel different fuel sources and impact category is uh, the scope is to understand what is the greenhouse gas emission and the atmospheric pollutant that is then again atmospheric pollutant is into the air acidification, then photochemical ozone formation, water and soil eutrophication and human toxicity. Then the invent when come to inventory and impact the variant is used is gate to grape and LCI inventory is done for the vehicle production, battery production, vehicle use that is fuel consumption and supply chain of the different energy sources. And the impact as I told in the previous case that is greenhouse gas emission and atmospheric pollutant emission. Now this is what the impact assessment, I am not getting into detail of each of this uh, uh, graph, but uh, the comparative picture what we are getting is that electric vehicle emits half of the GHG emission as compared to gasoline and diesel variant, I think possibly it is known also. Then in case of particulate matter also electric vehicle performs better than rest except for the Ford Focus since the electric model is heavier. And in photochemical ozone formation again electric vehicle perform better than the internal combustion engine in all cases analyzed. So when the comparative life cycle analysis was done for all this uh, model of cars all from different energy sources with a variant of uh, with the variant of get to grave then except particulate matter in GAG emission and photochemical ozone formation typically the electric vehicle is performing uh, better uh, but in case of particulate matter the food focus is uh, better as per electric vehicle because the model of electric is electric model electric vehicle is heavier. Then let us get into the uh, next case study that is the LC of rice and wheat and this example is sourced from uh, Kasia Pagarwal to 2021 from their paper what they have published in carbon footprint of rice and wheat production in Punjab and this is published in the Journal of Agricultural System. So what they have done they have tried to understand what is the impact of two major crops in Punjab that is rice and wheat and the location of the study is Punjab and the variant what they have used is cradle to farm gate that is what the LCA variant. And if you look at the carbon footprint for so the first in the left hand slide uh, left hand uh, left hand side figure gives the carbon footprint for rice and right hand side gives the carbon footprint of wheat. And uh, if you see the carbon footprint of uh, rice mostly the maximum uh, footprint coming from residue burning mostly and also the methane due to submerged paddy and also the energy which is 15.32 and in case of the carbon footprint from wheat it is mostly from the fertilizer and that is out of that you will find that uh, mostly 51 percent is from the production and 6.2 is from NTO. If you get into the table above the in the right hand side of the slide, uh, I am just focusing more on the median because there is a variation in mean. So if you look at the 
per hectare carbon footprint for rice is 7.41 whereas the per hectare carbon footprint of wheat is 5.19 that is per hectare and per ton the carbon footprint is 6.12 and per ton is uh, per ton for wheat is 4.03. So, this, uh, uh, this gives us what is the impact of production of rice and wheat and mostly from which source or which uh, part of which life which part of the life cycle of the product we get how much is the impact. Now, going further uh, this is the interesting LCA analysis done for a semolina pasta. Possibly we never think when we consume all this uh, food, uh, food item or all these goods that how much is the impact is being uh, created by this product. So, you will find many studies talking about life cycle impact of a burger, life cycle impact of a specific food, life cycle impact of a uh, specific fruit. So, this is a the interesting example from the LC of a semolina pasta. The methodology, methodology is cradle to gate and this has been this data has been sources from the uh, different sources, but this is mostly uh, being presented as a post in taste of science and the parameter what they have quantified from raw material to the final cooking stage and they have tried to see uh, the impact with respect to ecological footprint, with respect to carbon footprint and with respect to the water footprint. So, if you look at the stages of this semolina, it start from raw material production, then milling, then packaging, then pasta distribution, then distribution to the uh, sorry pasta production, then getting into the distribution from field to distribution and finally cooking. So, here if you look at the ecological uh, footprint is uh, mostly in case of uh, raw material production, cooking and from field to distribution it is high. Similarly, in case of carbon footprint also this is 463 that is CO2 equivalent per kg and again this is cooking it is more and from field to distribution it is more. And water footprint also it is more in all these three stages, but uh, except possibly the distribution and also in the uh, milling rest all the water consumption is more. So, mostly when you compare all this uh, footprint ecological footprint, carbon footprint and water fruit footprint, you will find that in few of the stages their footprint is more. So, what we have tried to do in this session is to by taking different types of examples, different types of product and understand how the impact has been calculated or how using LCA, how they have created the impact assessment at the different stages of the product. So, we took the example of a Levi's jeans, we took the example of the different variant of cars, we took the example of rice and wheat and we took the example of the semolina pasta. So, possibly when next time we consume a product the immediate uh, thought comes over there is that how, how much is the impact or where are the places where we are creating the impact by consuming this specific product. Thank you.